All right, all right. Well, welcome everyone to another AppSheetTraining.com webinar. Uh, I am Clark James. I'm also hosted here. I have Stefan Quartermont and I have Landon Quartermont. Both of these are exceptional guys. Uh, Landon's going to be doing our demo today, and I know we're all excited to see what he has to offer. But before we get into it, I want to tell you guys, we do still have our $39 sale um, on AppSheetTraining.com. Uh, like I said, last month, I'm not sure how long this is going to last because Stefan usually doesn't let promos last too, too long. Um, but, uh, you're definitely going to want to take advantage of that while it's still on the table. And today's demo API workflow or add an update multiple rows using API workflows. Landon, I'm gonna let you talk about this as you are uh, definitely more experienced with it than I am. All right. Well, hopefully everybody can hear me well. And um, excited to be on board with you guys today, talking about a topic that I really enjoy with an app sheet, uh, mainly because it just makes you feel really powerful. Um, whenever you accomplish a lot without a whole lot of work, you just feel good inside. And that is the, uh, the end goal of API workflows and multi-row ads and updates um, using AppSheets API. Um, and so anyways, we're going to be talking about the logistics of how to accomplish that today. Um, and to do that, we've kind of developed a very basic uh, demo app that will just serve to demonstrate the functionality. It's not the greatest app in the world, um, but it will help us uh, see a use case in action. And we will begin to build the uh, workflows for multi-row creation um, here in the next, you know, handful of minutes. Um, so I will go ahead and share my screen with you and we'll jump in. All right. Hey, Clark, could I get um, sharing enabled for me? You should be good. Okay. Um, says host disabled attendee screen sharing. All right. We'll try that again. You'd think that we would have this down by now. <laughs> <laughs> Still no luck? All right. I think I'm in. I'm in the system. All right quick quote from one of our favorite movies in-house, Ant-Man, in case anybody was wondering. All right. Um, so this is the application. And the end goal that I was trying to achieve with this application is essentially the ability to um, quick edit multiple records um, at one time. That way a user is not having to um, generate each record individually one by one and then edit each one. So this is a basic time card application and the, uh, the premise behind the use for multi-row creation stems from the ability to um, kind of use a preset schedule that will, um, that will inform all the rows that are generated for a particular user. That way the user isn't having to generate those rows on their own. They're not having to open up a form every single time they want to add time or modify time for a given day. And so I'll go ahead and show you kind of the, the basic idea here. Um, we have a interactive dashboard, which will be the main view of this application. Um, it has a list of billing periods here on the left and each billing period uh, will kind of show show you the time cards for each user within that billing period with a group aggregate on the number of hours that have been accrued for each user. Um, so we can roll through here and, and show you all the uh, billing periods. All right, and obviously on the right-hand side, we, we do see those time cards, again, with that group aggregate on the hours. Um, you can click into the records to see the details of uh, of a record. Well, first you have to open the full pane and then you could click on a record. Um, but that is again, the main view here on the right hand side, we have a preset schedule, which I actually pre-filled in Google sheets, which I will show you in just a moment. Um, there are two different types of, of payments. Um, 
that we're we're kind of working with here. The idea is if a user logs time on a standard payment day, then um, their kind of hourly wage will just be a multiplied by one. Um, but if they work on either a weekend or a holiday, we want to multiply that by 1.5. So just adding a little bit more complexity for this use case. And then we also have a user's view here where we can um, add users and assign an hourly rate for them. So I'll go ahead and show you the data schema from the spreadsheet. Um, there are just four tables in this. So our first table is going to be the users table, uh, which is fairly universal across most applications that we make. Um, pretty straightforward. We'll have a unique email for each user. We'll have a name, uh, a role, whether or not they're a full-time employee, and then their hourly wage. And then we'll have a schedule here. And again, I did pre-fill this with information just from Google Sheets. I just did, I started with just a year of data. Um, so this just has all of 2021. And uh, I have a date type. And essentially the idea is if the weekday is either a six or a seven, meaning it's a Saturday or Sunday, by default, it's going to be weekend pay. Um, and if not, it's going to be standard pay. We can manually update our schedule later to include holidays where holidays are necessary. Um, and I'll, I'll show you how we can do that later. Um, and then we have a time cards table, which will have uh, just a unique ID for each record. We'll have a user associated with each record. We'll have a pay period associated with each record that should correspond with a date. Um, and then our pay type, what, what, it will multiply the hourly wage by um, and then the amount that we'll pay out to that user and when it was paid and who was paid by. All right. Finally, we'll have a pay period table that will just capture the start and end date for each pay period. Um, so they would, the employees would receive a paycheck at the end of each pay period for the dates in between the start date and the end hey, date. Lando, can you zoom this in a little bit? I think it might be a little bit difficult for some of our yes. viewers to see. Apologize for that. No okay. Worries. All right. How does that look? Much better. Thank you. Excellent. All right. So we'll go ahead and jump into the editor and I'll just show you a brief overview of what those tables look like with an app sheet. Um, so fairly standard, just assigning my keys and labels uh, for the columns that are most important whenever we're going to be relating our tables together. Um, so in the user table, our key is going to be the email and the label is going to be whatever the employee's name is. Um, within our schedule, um, just the key and label can be the date. And I've just added a formula in here to assign the weekday. So if we do add records to our crew schedule, um, by default, it's going to give us whatever uh, weekday it is. So if it's, you know, a Saturday, it's going to return a, uh, I think it's a seven or six or a seven, I can't recall. Um, but it's essentially going to help us get our weekends right. Um, and that will help with the payment multiplier once we start creating time cards. Um, for our time cards, um, nothing too crazy here. I am doing one lookup on the pay period table to grab the date where, uh, or sorry, the pay period where the date is in between a start date and an end date for a pay period. Um, so it's automatically going to assign time, time cards to a pay period whenever those time cards are created. Um, assuming that a pay period already exists for that time slot. All right, um, the payment multiplier, it's basically if it's standard pay, it's gonna be just times one. And if it's anything else, it's gonna be times 1.5. All right, and then the payment should be the hours uh, multiplied by that payment multiplier and then by the user's hourly wage. Okay. And that should put us in a pretty good position. Um, finally, take a look at the pay period table. Um, just have, uh, I think, yeah, just assigned our ID as the key column and then our start date is the label there. Um, although I don't know that that will be extremely relevant. 
Um, can you show us the spec just to again get a high level idea and then see the data relationship? Absolutely. Okay, so again, the main table is going to be our time card table and a time card will have a user associated with it as well as a pay period associated with it. And the crew schedule is in, it's independent, but it will inform the rows that we will generate in the time card table. So what my goal is uh, to do in order to demonstrate the idea for adding multiple records at one time, what we'll do is whenever a user is added, we will add um, as many time cards as are in, uh, as our records in the crew schedule table. So there should be 365 records in the crew schedule table, and we will add all of those as time cards for that user whenever a user is added. Um, so that's going to be the first case that we'll work with. And then we're going to work with one or two additional cases where we can update those records as date changes in our application. So we can not only add multiple records at one time, but we can update multiple records at one time using AppSheet's API workflows. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in. We're gonna build our first use case. And again, what we'll need here is to build a workflow. So you'll find that in the behavior tab at the left-hand side of the menu. And then you'll go over to the top where it says workflow. And we will add a new workflow here. And I'm going to just call this, um, especially whenever you're working with larger applications, you'll wanna get very specific with your naming conventions on workflows. So I try to be as specific as possible. So I'm going to call this add time cards when user is added. And we're gonna get here to the triggering table in the event that will trigger this workflow. So it will be on the user table the update event is going to be ads only. And where it says, if this is true, there is no other condition that I want to add here. So I'm just going to leave this blank. And then now we can create our action. So again, I'm just gonna name this the same as what I named the workflow. So add, uh, let's see, add time cards when user is added. And this will be relevant whenever we're going to consider troubleshooting our workflows. We wanna get very specific with how we name each action so that we know what we're looking for in the logs whenever we're looking for an error. All right, and the type of action that we're gonna do here is call a webhook. Now AppSheet gives us a handful of different options here. Um, we can do a custom webhook um, which I won't get into to the, specifics, to the specifics of because AppSheet has kind of added here most of the options that you would have been using if you were previously going to do a custom webhook. Um, you would use a custom webhook if you were trying to uh, transfer information to a different application. So if you wanted to add records to a different app that you've created, you would use a custom workflow that way you can pre-fill a different application's URL. But in this case, we're just adding records or updating records in our current application. So we're going to use one of these actions and I'm going to use the add row action. So by default, AppSheet will give us the app ID of our current application. And then we'll get to specify a table name that we want to modify. And in this case, I want to add time cards. So I'm going to uh, specify the table as the time card table. Now, for our body, um, this can get a little bit tricky and can be a little bit confusing, but I always just go back to AppSheet's documentation, which you can find at help.appsheet.com, or you can also navigate there through the Crew Tools extension. And what we're going to be looking for is there's an article called uh, invoking the API, and I didn't spell that right, but that's okay. And I'm just gonna pull this up here. So AppSheet will give us all the ideas um, that we're looking for whenever we're trying to pre-fill all of these parameters that it's asking for in that workflow detail. And so the first thing that we're actually gonna be looking for here, um, as a lot of these already just apply to the custom, uh, the custom webhook, which we're not working with. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this JSON body that AppSheet is kind of pre-filled for me. And I'm going to modify it per my needs. So just going to copy that and I'm going to throw it into our body here. And then we're just going to configure it to our use case. I've gone ahead and put the link to that article in the live chat and I'll throw it in the description of the video later. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So the first thing to notice here is there are kind of some, some universal properties to this uh, JSON object that we're giving AppSheets API. And um, the first thing is the type of action that we're doing. So generally speaking, um, the way that JSON works is it's got a uh, kind of a key value pair. And so the key will correspond uh, with like a column um, and the value would be whatever you want to fill that column with. Um, so we're, AppSheet is going to be asking for a set of parameters in the front end. And that is this part right here. So we're going to give AppSheet some parameters that it is looking for that will help it interpret the information that we give it later whenever we are adding rows. And that section will be found here. So the question is what, what parameters are necessary? AppSheet's kind of pre-filled some information for us. Um, but if we go back to the document, um, let's see, how do I get rid of this? Pull this to the side, okay. All right, AppSheet will tell us um, what it's looking for. So the first one is the actions. And it tells us that we can do ads, we can do deletes, we can do edits, um, we can find records, uh, which I have never really used before. So I can't really speak to this, um, but we'll, what we'll work with today are ads and edits. And what we can do um, is we'll, we'll specify our action first. So that's going to be the first parameter that we'll fill there in that top section. So action will be add. And then we have additional properties that we can tell AppSheet. So the locale. Uh, so if you're capturing GPS data, um, you can go ahead and, uh, sorry, the that's for location. For locale, it's mainly going to help with determining the formatting of dates. Um, so in our case, we're going to be working with uh, English US, and that's going to kind of spit out the following date format. That's what AppSheet would be looking for. Um, then we have location. Again, this will help with that long coordinates. Uh, then we have the ability to run as a particular user's email. So you can either specify the user email function, which will return the email of the current user, or you could prefill a static value in that, in that property as well. Um, we have time zone, and then you can also specify certain user settings um, that may apply to your application. In our case, we will all only go. Sorry, we're only going to be working with the uh, the time zone, um, the run as user email, and the locale are really the only properties that we're going to be working with. And so I'm just going to pre-fill those. So here. We've got locale, English, US. We do not need the location, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Again, our, our action is add, um, so I'm not changing anything there. The time zone is just going to be central standard time. We're based out of Texas, so that's what we're gonna roll with there. And then this application is not going to use any user settings, so I am going to delete that there and remove that final comma. Um, there are some formatting things that you'll learn the more that you work with JSON objects. And one of the things that you'll find is that um, after each key value pair, there's going to be a comma to indicate that there will be another key value pair. But obviously after your last key value pair, there will be no comma. Um, and AppSheet may yell at you or not run your workflow if you do have a comma at the end. So. Um, we'll keep that in mind and maybe we'll mess up anyways and we'll have to, we'll have to troubleshoot it, which will work for uh, good demonstration purposes as well. Okay, now, once we've established kind of our global properties here, we can then go to tell AppSheet what we're going to add to the time card table. So it's going to be looking here for a list of columns from the time card table that we're going to pre-fill. So I'm going to open up my 
handy dandy crew tools extension here. And I'm going to take a look at the columns that I want to pre-fill. So I'm going to pre-fill our ID. And anytime we want to use a dynamic uh, value from app sheet, we're going to need our double angle brackets on each side. And I'm going to put our unique ID function. And then the user is going to be whatever user was added. So I'm gonna go ahead and add our column name, user. And the value that I want to put here is going to be um, the user email from the record that we are adding. And I need to wrap that in brackets because it's a column. And we'll add something to this later um, in just a second. But I'm going to continue on assigning which columns I want to pre-fill. All right, the date will likely be our final column, I believe. Okay. So essentially what I'm looking for is any column that isn't calculated by an app formula. I want to go ahead and try to assign its value here in AppSheet. So that should be, okay. So we actually, we don't have the value for this yet. And this value needs to come from the crew schedule table, which again is what we're using to inform all of the rows that are being generated. So I'm gonna go ahead and eliminate every other column here. And I deleted my comma there because this is going to be our last column. Now, if you look here, um, this says rows, and currently there is only one object that it, is, that it would be returning here. So if we want to add multiple objects or build multiple rows, we're going to need um, to add a start expression that will generate the number of records that we want to add. So in our case, we're going to, again, add every, uh, a record, sorry, a time card for every record in the crew schedule table. So I'm going to put a start expression here. And my start expression is going to come from the, um, the crew schedule table. And I'm just going to put the key column, which is going to be the date. And we're just going to return all rows here. So let me, my start expression there, need to make sure that it's um, running through AppSheet's kind of parsing engine. So I have those double angle brackets on each side. And now I'm good to pre-fill information from the crew schedule table in this section right here. So, I'm going to put date here. And this needs to be wrapped in quotation marks. Um, generally, whenever you're working with JSON objects, um, you are transferring uh, essentially a big text file um, to another party. And in this case, it's routing back to AppSheet system. But what, what is going to happen here is it's going to modify our date uh, because it is a text value. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that it returns in the format that we want it to as a text value. So we're going to wrap this date in a text formula and we're going to specify the format that we're looking for. So it should be year, 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 dash month, month, dash day, day. All right, and that should give us the correct format. And then I'll close off my text function. Now, one thing to take note of here is our email is actually coming from the user table and not from the crew schedule table. There is no email associated with any crew schedule row. And if I wanna get the email that corresponds with the user that is being added, I actually need to put a little prefix here 
that gets me in the context of our user table rather than the crew schedule table. So I'm going to put our this row function and I'm going to specify that it is only one context back. So this should give me the email of the user that is being added. All right, so that, um, we are almost done here. I actually need to add one thing and that is our in token to finish our start expression. Okay, so this should give us all of the time cards that we're looking for whenever we add a user. Now there is one or two additional steps that we'll have to take whenever we're adding a webhook workflow. So I will go ahead and save our changes and AppSheet will likely give me an error because I have created a webhook workflow and I haven't allowed for um, API interaction through this application. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna follow AppSheet's instructions and I'm going to go to the manage tab on the left-hand side of the menu. I'm gonna to go to integrations. I'm going to click on the in section and I'm going to enable cloud services. And then I, sometimes you'll have to create an access key. Um, AppSheet by default may create like an invalid uh, access key. And so you may have to create another one, which isn't complicated. You just click the button here and you would toggle on that new access key. So there you have it. All right, and once we have done that, let's see, we should be able to move forward. Um, so I, I think I can just refresh my browser here. It's kind of odd because most changes that you make within the editor, you have to save. Um, but AppSheet did not give me the ability to save that. So we'll see what it did here. Okay, so we'll try this one more time. It looks like it did save that it enabled the cloud services and the access key that I created. So I'm going to try to refresh this one more time. All right, so that has done it for us. Our errors have gone away. And now we can test our workflow. So um, what I'll do just for the easiest demonstration is I'm just going to eliminate records that we already have here. Okay. That way we can just tell right off the bat whether or not it worked. And if it didn't, then we can go into the logs and we'll try to troubleshoot it to identify why. Okay. All right, so let's go back to our application. And again, the triggering event for our workflow is going to be the addition of a new user. So in our application, I can just go here to the user tab and I will create a new user. Um, all right. Okay. All right, so Kate is a non-admin. He's not a full-time employee. He's one of our interns. And we'll just give him an arbitrary number here. All right. And we are going to save that change. So we know that AppSheet is trying to run a workflow here. Uh, we can see that there's kind of one sync operation that is trying to run in the background. Um, and we will take a look at our time card table. All right, awesome. So we know that it worked because all of these records just got generated. And again, you're, you're just feeling really good at this point because you're, you're thinking, wow, wow, I just created 365 records and I hardly had to do anything. Um, and that is the beauty of using AppSheet's uh, API webhooks to create multiple rows at one time. Um, quickly, I want to walk through one of the benefits of using AppSheet's 
API workflow as opposed to their um, client side actions. Um, so generally speaking, I want to say that their actions can run into errors after about 30 ads or updates, um, you know, give or take maybe 15 records. Um, last I worked with the, just the client side edits, which I do use in most cases. Um, it, it started bogging down if I was trying to edit more than 30 to 50 records at one time, um, performing an action on a set of rows. And so in order to accomplish the same function, um, what I ended up doing instead is creating a webhook with AppSheets API. And in doing so, um, it's just, it can be a little bit more robust when it comes to making ads or edits over uh, potentially hundreds of records. And, and it takes a very, very short amount of time. Like the time that it took me to actually get to the spreadsheet um, and take a look at our time card table, this was already done. It already generated all of the rows. Whereas if you're working with it client side, it may take a little bit longer, um, but it it can be more robust for smaller data set or smaller yep. data sets or smaller data changes. Um, AppSheet also made some updates recently where they batch uh, multi-row actions when they're run through a workflow. So if you run the workflow and you manually specify the API call like Landon did and you define the action you want to run, it can... Uh, it'll batch all those together, but it will do the same thing if you do a change data workflow and specify an action that runs on a set of rows, and then you do a multi-row update there, it will batch all those together as well and run uh, pretty efficiently without clogging up your client side with you know 100 or 1,000 syncs. Yep. One other thing to note is, as, as you can tell, um, we haven't done any sync operation. We haven't tried to manually sync this. So even though these time cards did not immediately show up right after we uh, ran that workflow and we added the user, they do show up automatically after maybe 10 or 15 seconds in the application. Um, and again, uh, this kind of helps us achieve our, our end goal of being able to edit multiple records at one time so the user is not having to generate all those records. So if I'm Cade, you know, and I'm trying to fill in my time for, uh, you know, this last pay period, I can just go to the quick edit feature within this dashboard and I can just type in, you know, all of the numbers for the amount of time that I did on each of those days rather than creating a form for each one. So just creating some, some synergy through automation, making life easier for users, um, and yeah, just speeding up. Um, and, and maybe even the idea for you is making sure that, that data is uniform, um, making sure that there, there is no room for user error. There are plenty of use cases for the, uh, the AppSheet API webhooks, um, and, and workflows. And so uh, just trying to give you the basics here. All right. So let's work with one other um, option here, and that is going to be a multi-row update. Um, so what I want to do here is I'm going to um, specify an action, which I've actually already created here. And I'll, I'll, I'll quickly show you the action in our editor. So there is an action that I've created on the pay period table. And what this does is it sets a column that I've created called payment trigger to our current date and time. Um, this value is kind of irrelevant. Um, what matters is that it's getting filled out. And in our case, what I want to do is go into our pay period table and I just want to delete this value and my goal is whenever I am in that dashboard, our time cards dashboard, I want to be able to click this button and mark all of the time records for that pay period as paid. So this is more of a use case of an administrative function uh, where maybe whoever is running payroll, um, whenever they're processing you know, time cards and everything like that, they can just click this button and mark all of those records as being paid. 
So in order to do that, we could have to update, you know, depending on the number of employees that we had, maybe an upwards of a hundred plus records at one time. And so in that case, we're going to, again, look to create a, an API web, uh, sorry, an API workflow that will edit all of those records. So let's go ahead and do that. So the triggering event here is going to be, uh, we want to update time cards when pay period is marked paid. And I'm just going to copy this text because that is what I will use to determine the name of my action. So this will be happening on the pay period table. And again, the condition here is going to be that our payment trigger column, I believe is what that is called, is modified. So AppSheet has the ability to evaluate a column's value before and after a change in order to uh, trigger a workflow. And so we are going to use that function here. So it's going to be this row before dot payment trigger should not equal this row after dot payment trigger. So this means that there was not only a change that happened on the pay period table, but specifically the payment trigger column in the payment in the pay period table was changed. All right, now I'll create my action here. Okay, we're going to call a webhook. And in this case, we are going to be editing a row. All right, and the table that we're gonna be changing, again, is the time card table. And then I'm just gonna copy the body of my last webhook. Okay. All right. And this will be a different type of action. So I'll go back to AppSheet's documentation and I'm going to find the type of action I'm looking for. It is called edit. So I'm gonna go ahead and modify this from add, make it edit. The properties should be the same here and the rows that will be modified are going to be different. So I need to dynamically tell AppSheet which records need to be updated here. And in order to do that, I'm going to create a select query on our time cards table. All right, actually it's just time card, it's singular. And always return the key value in a start expression because it is looking for a list of references generally. All right, and the records that I'm going to be modifying here should correspond with the pay period that is being changed and being marked as paid. So what I'm gonna do here is, uh, let's see, it should be where, look at my schema, should be where the pay period ID And that is two words. ID is equal to this row dot ID, which should be the key column in our pay period table. All right. Okay. So that should give us the right data here. And what we're going to be changing, um, we're gonna give AppSheet the ID in uh, from the time card. And then the value that we are going to be modifying here should be the timestamp paid and the paid by. So the timestamp paid, we're going to modify our key here
and this is going to be the text value of the now function, which will return a date time of the current time and date. So we need to format that. So similar to what we did um, in our date function on our last add, um, we are going to specify year, 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 dash month, month, dash day, day. And then we're going to give the time in hours, minutes, and then seconds. And that is going to be our format for the now function. Okay. Finally, we're going to do our paid by column. And this is just going to be the user's email. And in order to get this, we need to um, add in an additional global property here. And so I'm just going to add this. All right. So I'm just going to grab it from what AppSheet said. And I'm also going to put it in front of time zone. I'm not sure that matters, but that looks like the format that AppSheet did. So that's what we will do as well. All right. Okay. And then this value is going to be user email, which I just want to make sure I get the format on this right. Um, okay. Great, and we're just going to do our double angle brackets, put in user email, and that should be all that we need there. All right, let's see here. Okay, so I'm going to add in a comma at the end just for demonstration purposes uh, so that you can see a quick example of troubleshooting. Um, so I'm anticipating because of that, that AppSheet will not run our action, um, but we'll, we'll verify that. All right, but this should be all that we need here. We specified that we're editing a row, we've specified our table name that we're modifying, and then we've given AppSheet the values that it's looking for. So we're, we're looking at a list of time card records where the pay period is the pay period that's getting modified according to this workflow. And we are pre-filling it with the current date and time, as well as the user that is paying everybody. All right. So let's go ahead and save these changes. <clears throat> All right. So we'll go ahead and uh, jump in. And we're just going to mark our first pay period as being paid. All right, so, okay, awesome. Well, AppSheet did not follow the uh, my line of thought in not accomplishing what I told it to accomplish. <laughs> um, it did it anyways, which is great, um, but I still want to show you where you would find out why um, a webhook did not work. So again, we know that it did work because all of these were updated and they should all be for that first pay period. Um, so paid by info at appsheettraining.com on this date and time. And so where would you go if your webhook did not work? You can navigate there two ways. Uh, the easiest of which is if you're already in the webhook pane here in the editor for that webhook, um, then you can just hit the log button at the top and it will open up a new, uh, new tab. <clears throat> Landon, do you want to try to put the wrong key in there for the application key and throw that error? Let's 
Okay. Uh, for the app ID column. Oh, it's got a drop down. Never mind. They wouldn't mess that up. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I will show you an example of what I did the other day um, that was causing all sorts of errors for me. And I, I had taken that body from AppSheet's documentation and I had, I knew that I didn't need user settings. So I deleted this, but I did not delete the uh, closing squ squiggly bracket. And so I'll just show you what that looked like. So I'll go ahead and save my changes there. I just added that squiggly bracket back in like I had yesterday. And we'll try to make a payment on <clears throat> the current pay period. All right, so we'll take a moment and by now it most likely would have already updated so i'm already suspicious that i made an error <clears throat> excuse me get some water here all right and it does it takes almost five minutes for errors to show up in the audit log and so we may um, go ahead and get a head start on questions while we're waiting for that. Uh, but in a moment, we'll show you what the logs look like and how to debug those errors. All right, and Clark, are you, uh, are you fielding the questions? Uh, we've you... actually been answering the questions as they come. Okay. Um, so, but if anyone does have a question, uh, please feel free to post that now while we do have some time to to kill. It's great. I'm seeing a lot of familiar names in our YouTube comments. So glad if we could uh, have you guys all back. Uh, Stefan, you were muted. Man, I pressed the space bar and everything. Didn't have the right window selected. Raphael said he was loving the webhooks and is getting a lot of cool ideas for them. Landon, uh, what other stuff have you used? I know I've used the find. So you mentioned find records, some you didn't do very often. I've used find records to integrate app sheet data into third-party applications. So to retrieve data from an app sheet app, you know, maybe I'm connecting a Google sheet, a SQL database and an Excel document all into an app sheet app. I can pull that data via the app sheet API out to a third party service, maybe a Google app script or maybe some other type of tool and access that data. So it's a really good way to stand up a, a REST API interface for all those uh, various data sources. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I would say my most common use case is updating either child records or grandchild records based off of um, a data change in the parent or grandparent record. Um, so idea would be something like in, in order capture application um, where you have either, you know, I don't know, tens or hundreds of line items within an order um, and you need to update all of those at one time um, you need to mark uh, you know you need to change the status on those line items or um, I don't know update inventory or anything like that um, as a result of a parent record change um, just quickly isolating those child records through a start expression or grandchild records through a start expression um, and being able to update all of those records at one time. Okay. All right. So this is the error that we ran into. Um, AppSheet tells us here, okay, so the we know that it's trying to perform a workflow action. Um, and there are these little red binoculars that you'll see as you have the audit log open. So we know that the condition passed. It says condition true here. And that 
was for the workflow rule, update time cards when pay period is marked paid. So I know that's the action that I'm looking for. And then the subsequent action that should take place is the actual workflow. So we know the condition was passed, but something happened whenever AppSheet actually tried to run the workflow. And we're going to inspect as to why that may be. So we'll click on the red binoculars and it will open this page for us. And what we're looking for here is what it says right here, the errors. So in this case, um, it's, it's not telling us um, all that would be helpful for us. Um, it's, it is saying that there's some issue with the text after the JSON content. So after a JSON object was sent to AppSheet's API, it encountered some sort of error in the formatting is basically what this is telling us. And what we can see here is that we're only getting, uh, it's, it's after, well, it, it tells us that it's after one record essentially. Um, and so I spent actually a while yesterday trying to figure out what app sheet was telling me here uh, before finally realizing that I had added in an additional squiggly bracket where there did not need to be one. Um, so just taking a deep look at your formatting in your JSON body um, is the key in, in particular with this error. But I will say oftentimes, uh, if I haven't worked with AppSheet's API in a while and I'm trying to work with a column that uses a either a timestamp or a date column um, and I do not format it correctly as a text value, I will run into errors there as well. Um, or it will start inputting the wrong value in the column. Um, for example, if we are in December, it may say that the day of the month is December rather than the month being December. Um, sorry, the day of the month being 12 rather than the month being December. Um, so that is another common error that I run into. Uh, so definitely keep a lookout for that if you are working with any uh, date time columns or date columns. Go ahead and delete my additional squiggly bracket there. And I will also say for debugging these changes. things, it's sometimes helpful to throw that JSON body in a text editor. Uh, if you can, that formats the text a little bit um, and also to test your expressions in a virtual column uh, to make sure that they are valid and returning things. So debugging these API workflows is going to be challenging work. Uh, we cover a fair amount of how to debug these type of template expressions inside of our template course. Um, so I'll go ahead and throw a link in there. So if you're looking for more resources on how to debug these and look at some more processes around that, uh, that's a great course to reflect on because these work basically the same as a document template for an email workflow or something like that. Correct. And um, this application is public. We'll be sharing the link uh, after the webinar concludes. Uh, so just keep your eyes peeled for that. All right. Well, thank you so much, Landon, for being with us today. We really appreciate you taking the time to uh, show us some really cool features. I uh, hope everybody learned as much as even I did, even though Landon has taught me how to do this in the past. Uh, it still can be a pretty uh, frustrating thing when you're trying to do it on your own. Uh, so that's awesome. Um, but yeah, if you uh, like today's webinar, please feel free to subscribe and like our YouTube videos. 
Uh, it really does help us uh, be able to keep these going. If we see you guys are interested. Uh, it makes us want to publish more content. Um, and if you have any recommendations on content in the future, please feel free to send me an email. Uh, my email will be posted in the description uh, as well. Um, and I'd love to hear your thoughts, concerns, questions, etc., cetera, um, so that we can provide more uh, content that is uh, applicable to the apps that you guys are building. Um, so yeah, that should do it for today's webinar. Remember, it is uh, over, let's see, it's like 60% off appsheettraining.com right now. Um, so like I said, uh, that shouldn't be going on too much longer. Uh, but uh, so feel free to get that uh, before it runs out. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys again next week. Uh, same time, same place. Um, we didn't do the Zoom call today um, because we didn't feel like we were getting as many users in there. Uh, but if there's something that you want us, us to bring back, uh, feel free to let us know and we can make adjustments as necessary. Uh, so yeah, that'll conclude us. Everyone have a great rest of your day and we'll see you again next week. All right.